Farah, at what age did you start singing and how has your singing journey been so far for you? Okay, um, I started singing when I was 15. I was in the Allen School Choir and the journey since then has been rough sometimes because you know, when you starting, because like I'm shy, but still, you know, so it has been rough because like coming out of a box, like, and it was also like very informative and I, I love what I'm doing so far. So falling off from your shy demeanor, mm -hmm. you, you say that music has helped you to come out a bit yes. and, and work into your own. Yes. Okay. Definitely. A question for you. Mm -hmm. Who is Shakara Stricker? Well, I am 20 years old. I consider myself to be very goofy, <laughs> like to laugh. I love to spend time with my friends and my family. I love to sing, obviously. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's who you are. That's who I am. You would have graced a number of big stages in this journey. <laughs> um, can you name some of them, some that are memorable to you? The, the, the grand stages, how those experiences were for you, how they have helped you? Okay. Um, I was a finalist in the last Beach of the World um, competition. I, my most recent one was the Republic Day celebration where I sang background vocals in the Nicholas Branca band. Um, I did Handel's Caribbean Messiah with the 1688 Collective. Um, I did <laughs> um, the Bajan Songbook with the NCF recently too. I, I love that performance. You got great feedback from that one. Yeah. We got great feedback from the entire series. Yeah, it was really good. So how does Shai Shakara prepare for these big stages? Because you're usually <laughs> dynamic. I've seen you quite a few times. <laughs> how do you prepare? Well, first I have to think about what I'm doing and who I'm performing to. So, like, obviously you have nerves. So, like, all Shakara would be like so scared and I would just do what I have to do but now I realize that it's bigger than me so I have to like kind of step out and do more so that like everyone feel what I feel in the process. Why music? Where, where can you remember where your love of music or that choice to say this is what because is, is not a hobby for you. You actually studied in it and everything. Yeah. Why music? Why your love for music? Okay, so currently I'm a second year in the BCC music program. But before that, I was studying political studies and sociology. So when I was at school, I always loved social studies and, and I wanted to be a therapist like for like other autistic children or just children in general. And then while I was studying sociology and politics, I told myself, I really like to sing and I want to do it. So like then I, I decided to do the music program and then I would say like last year, I was thinking about what I really, really want to do because I love to sing, but I still also love to help people. So I was like, hmm, maybe I should like combine Two of my favorite things like music and helping people and like sh I should go and study music therapy so that is what I'm gonna do after I finish the music program. Nice. The music program and that journey studying has that allowed you to have a greater appreciation for this art form that you love for so much? For sure, for sure. Like before music I just used to sing but like now I have all this knowledge and I can use the knowledge to like just bring it out more. So yeah, for sure. Nice. If you were to paint a picture of where you want to be within the next five to six years, as far as singing mm -hmm. is concerned, what, what would your journey look like? I would be on every stage, <laughs> every stage, and I would be like, 
putting out my own music still because right now I'm also like singing in hotels well this one hotel and I love I love doing that so I would do a little bit of everything nice if you had that one person locally mm -hmm. female remember it's a women's yes. it's a women's series <laughs> that you were given the opportunity to either perform with live, sing with on an album, who would that person be and why? Nakita. <laughs> I love Nakita. Like, not only her voice, like, her personality, her work ethic. I just love Nakita. How, you, you, you love the singing. Mm -hmm. That's one part. Have you done anything as it relates to stage due to your shyness in terms of your performance? And being more comfortable or that has progressed naturally um well that's a good question hmm i it happened recently like i don't know i it, it has to be natural because like one minute i don't want to do something and then this next minute i just i want to give more nice I know you mentioned the stages you performed on, but you're also a member of a good few groups, singing groups. Mm -hmm. You want to list those singing groups and then say to us how you find time for each of these rehearsals and preparations and mm -hmm. how, how each group has impacted on your development too as well. Okay, so I'm going to start from the beginning. <laughs> the first band I was ever in was The Right Combination. I was... I was a part of that, I would say, four farm or fifth farm. And then I was in the Marlon Legal Voice Project. Like, up to this day, like, Marlon is, ooh. Then we started working with 1688, because we did um, Handles Caribbean Masaya. And then Ten and Tree, this is um, Narisa, Deronda, and myself. And we also did the Republic celebration with Nicholas Franco band and then Vibe Street <laughs> which is an all-female band we've done a few things also um, I feel like I'm missing something mm -hmm. but as I said there are quite a few <laughs> yeah. so how do you find time how um, do you <laughs> time management I had a problem with time management like I used to be all over the place but I figured out a schedule, so like, just starting out everything, rehearsals, we, surprisingly nothing ever clashed, and if something clashed, we would always like, find a substitute, we find a way to get it done, so yeah, once you're sure about something, you can make sure you do what you have to do. <laughs> Was there ever a point where you felt that you wanted to walk away or a very low moment where you had to find you picking yourself up and saying this is what I want to do amidst everything yeah you want to share that experience with us okay so in my shy moments like everybody would say you sound so good but you need to perform more and I had this one performance I remember I was like I can't, I can't do what these people want me to do. Like, I don't know what to do. So I was like, I think I want to take a break from singing. And I remember, because um, in school we have vocal tutors, so like private lessons. My vocal tutor is Kelly Cadogan. And we talked for like so long. And she said, Shakara, you cannot walk away. You cannot. And I, I remember that every time. So like, Anytime I'm feeling like I can't, I just remember Kelly. Kelly is like the best person to talk to. Nice. You have your Kelly. So in a flip question, mm -hmm. Shai Shakara, well, coming out Shakara, let's mm -hmm. not say that, <laughs> speaking to a junior school student at Allen School or wherever mm -hmm. you're at, BIM, Scott Music, wherever, mm -hmm. and there's this little person longing to have this music career mm -hmm. and at a crossroads what would your if you were speaking to them right now what would your advice be to them if you have a dream follow it never give up and like don't let people 
because there's always going to be someone looking down on you don't listen to them because if i listened i would not be here right now <laughs> shakara thank you for your time thank you for the contribution you have and continually make to the music art form and we at the ncf we wish you all the very best thank you so much and happy international women's day thank you same to you <laughs>